Dr. Mongoose. Well, I, I suppose there's no reason to keep the charade going. It's been a while since I've done one of these, actually, uh, since I've done a Ghost Recon video. And I felt like I wanted to do one, because it's a good game that I haven't gotten to play in a while, and it's a game that really deserves a lot more uh, attention and love on the YouTube community, on the gaming community, than it actually gets. And uh, for those of you wondering what happened to the character of Ghost Hotel, I don't know, maybe he's gone away, maybe he hasn't. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't totally decided yet. But I just felt like when it came to, you know, doing this sort of video, this kind of comeback video, uh, an introduction to really the series as a whole again, I felt that, you know, something a little bit more muted might have been, uh, might have been a bit more appropriate and a bit better. Um, but, yeah, since I haven't really done a video since uh, really explaining how this series works, or at least how this game works, since the uh, first bit of a GameSpot Tournament TV stuff I did, I felt like this would be a good way to reintroduce people to the game and talk about how the game works, and uh, really why you should buy it, because it is a very, very fun game. So, uh, Ghost Recon Future Future Warfare, um, it's, it's one of the most pointed, uh, not pointed, uh, the most, you know, condensed very strong, um, com purely competitive experiences I've had in a console FPS for a very long time, almost since Halo 2, because it's a game, whether intentionally or not, that was kind of designed from the ground up as far as multiplayer goes, that almost forces competitive play, and it's like this because you have, um, your main point, your main, uh, game mode, Every game mode you play, uh, except for two, one, no, except for two, and those are DLC-based game modes that you have to have DLC to um, to play. They're objective-based game modes. There's nothing um, team slayer-based, and that could obviously hurt a game's popularity and hurt a game's population. Um, but for this one, it doesn't. Um, for this game, it really, really helps it because it brings out the competitive nature in people, and it brings out that natural teamwork in people, and it really helps to foster that in a gaming community where that's really not, um, it's really not well pushed, it's really not well fostered with, you know, Call of Duty, with recent Call of Duty titles, and even recent Halo titles where it's all about, you know, me, 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 I need my kill streaks. I need my whatever, I need my Moab, you know, what have you. This one, you know, if, if you don't play as a team, if you don't, you know, work well together, if you don't do anything of that sort, then you're going to lose, and you won't get a good KD, you won't have a good time, you won't do well, which is the point of a lot of FPS gameplay and, you know, a lot of first-person shooter gameplay is you want to, you know, do well, you want to feel that sense of accomplishment, and so it's why I really, really like this game, um, but it's unfortunate because, you know, this pure experience, this pure, like, kind of multiplayer experience is affected not by, um, not by the game itself, but, well, by the game itself, and not even necessarily its community, but just kind of, like, Ubisoft didn't really know what they had going, and so they didn't put a enough time into this, into the multiplayer. And I'll get to that in a sec, but I wanted to explain kind of how multiplayer works, because I've kind of gone on this loping, uh, long conversation about how multiplayer works, um, without explaining how multiplayer works. So, how it works is you're divided into two squads of six, so it's a 6v6 game, and you have a squad of three people, and um, it works in somewhat of a battlefield sense, where in those three people you can spawn on them. Um, you can, you know, spawn on them, they spawn on you, that whole thing, and then you have a six-man team. Um, each, each objective is some sort, it's, to, uh, to win, you have to score, um, objective points, which is basically, um, your kills will factor in only if, you know, only at the beginning, and if the score is tied. I.e., so, you know, when those first objectives haven't come up yet, because they take about 10, so 10 to 15 seconds to come up, any kills you get will give you some score, and at the end, if, you know, the score is tied or very close, say, like, you know, 
245 to 243, your kills will come into effect there. But otherwise, the kills are just to get map control. And the objective points, there are you know, a variety of things. Some of them are uh, resupply points, where you capture it, and then you can resupply grenades, ammo, and all that. And for capturing and holding that point, you can get, um, whenever you resupply there, you get uh, fire ammo instead of you know regular ammo. Um, there's intel points, which are basically small little scanners that uh, any enemies that are in the vicinity, if you hold the point, they will appear as illuminated red highlights, as you can sometimes see here. And um, so you can tell when people are coming. There's also high value targets and comma rays, basically the best player on your team based on kills, kills to death, um, support actions, and how many objectives they've uh, worked on or taken. They will be a high value target, and they have to plant a bomb. They have to plant a bomb on you know a comp, some com codes or a comma ray, and when they do that, they will get an in, you'll get an intel sweep and briefly see where the entire enemy team is. And if the enemy team kills him, then they gain uh, points for that. And uh, finally, there is uh, EMP generators, or you know, single, basically what I call single uh, defensible points. Because with resupply points and with the um, resupply points and the scanners, you can have those switch hands constantly. Um, but single defense points would be like HVTs or EMPs, where you only have um, you either defend them or you don't, and whoever takes them, you know, the first time, they uh, they win. So, with that being said, that's kind of how the game works on a base level, but it's got a much more deeper system um, because your score is not just determined by how many kills you get versus how many deaths you get. You know, if you do that and you play well, then you know, good for you. But it places a lot more weight on what you do for your team. So you know. Uh, you can get what's called, you can get a stun gun, and you can stun people and data hack them. And what that means is that their entire enemy team appears as red highlights. And every time someone kills that person, you get what's called an intel assist. Um, engineers also have uh, scanner orbs where you get the same thing, only it's a shorter period of time and it works in a grenade sort of fashion. Um, for uh, for uh, the riflemen, they have... Um, they have ammo drops where it's uh, similar to kind of a mini resupply point and you get, you know, a team bonus every time you do that. So it's very much a game that works in the favor of even if, you know, you're going in with a bunch of random players and if you work as a team, even if, like, you know, two people work as a team versus an entire team of randoms, you are better off than an entire team of randoms not working together. So I really love that part that it, that it helps, you know, it, it pushes for the team aspect of things. And you know, I've met a lot of cool guys through Ghost, and we have a great time doing these sorts of things. And really, you, I can't say enough about, you know, how great of a game this is when it's working. And this is where we get to the part of the video where it's the disclaimer. And it's really unfortunate that such a very solid game is marred by kind of what I call Halo 3 Syndrome, where one big part didn't really work. And so you end up with um, something that's something that I call Halo 3 syndrome. Halo 3 was, you know, you could have fun with it online and all that sort of stuff if you had, you know, a good group of people and you had a real, you had a good connection. Um, I mean, it wasn't necessary, but for competitive play and for the most part, you know, everyone complained about lag in Halo 3. It's the same issue here. This plays amazing on land. Take it from me, I have played it on land. It's, it's beautiful. Online, it's like Halo 3. It's hit or miss. You either get a really good connection or you get a really shitty connection. And when it's really shitty, it's really shitty. Like, it's frustrating, tear your hair out shitty. You, people will warp around. Um, you, could, you could even see it early in the video. A guy appeared in front of me and then disappeared to above me. Like, on a catwalk, completely on a, second, on a separate level. Um, so, it can... It's this really good game with a ton of potential marred by, you know, poor, a poor online coding and a team that didn't put too much, not necessarily didn't put too much work in, but didn't put the right kind of work. I don't know how to say it, but it's, you're, you're going to end up with some, some issues. Um, there's not, though, that being said, there's not many balance issues in this game. Um... Which is really nice for a modern for a modern game. Uh, you have very very few balance issues, 
and what you end up getting is that you know the on an even playing field whether it's online or on LAN, a skilled player a skilled player will win if they're more skilled you know you have an amazing amount of gun customization and you know you can change things to suit your play style but if you put two people you know just across from each other and you give them the same gun the same everything the same setups the more skilled player will win and it's a game that does that very consistently consistently outside of you know lag issues which really does help the game as a whole when it does get frustrating because you know deep down that you know okay this is you know this is a bad connection you can leave the lobby and everything will do fine um so you know it it, it makes it helpful but it when it's really bad it's really bad and so that can turn some people off it doesn't turn me off you know there are you know times where I'll take a break from the game just because you know it's a little too frustrating or I don't have my team on because again that is what I'm used to I'm used to playing with a team I'm used to playing with you know friends and teammates that you know we do very very well uh, in this game and we'll you know we will st we'll stomp kids like this is a game I'm playing with my teammates right now and it's 451 to 22 we end up winning this game like six 600 something to like I don't even think they break 40 or even 30 I can't remember but uh, it's a very fun game when it's working and when you have a good group of people with you. Um, as far as customization goes, and I stand by this, you know, when I said it in my first GameSpot, GameSpot video, it's, you know, pants crappingly insane. You edit, you know, you edit your magazine, you edit your ammo type, your stock, sight, uh, underbarrel. You can edit your trigger system so that it works, you know, you'll... You can edit your trigger system where it will come up, your weapon will come up faster when you're moving out of sprint. Um, scouts have active camo that can be moved about. Uh, they have scanners that will, you know, give information on uh, people. Engineers have, you know, turrets and UAVs and all this crazy stuff. It's a very, very fun game, and it's a really good, it's a class-based, it's a class-based multiplayer game that rewards role-playing and rewards flexibility. As in, if you can, you know, play a role, or you have, if you're really strong in one sort of role, you'll be rewarded by, you know, since I'm a, for example, take me, I'm a very strong rifleman, um, and I'm a main slayer in this game. Pair me with, you know, a, pair me with two engineers in my squad, and I can, I can do the main, the heavy lifting uh, as far as slaying goes for those two, and they can run around taking objectives because engineers take objectives faster. They can run around stunning people and getting data hacks to give the entire team more information. They can run around setting up, you know, perimeter defenses with their turrets, or they can be giving, you know, information with their scanners and all that stuff, and I can keep them protected. Or, you know, you can have an engineer, a scout, and a rifleman, a scout to provide overwatch and to, you know, tell people where everyone on the map is, an engineer to, you know, be a little sneaky and kind of come around people, set up good defenses, and a rifleman to, you know, keep everyone covered while the other people do their jobs. So it's a very, very strong class system that works very, very well, and it's one of the few class, system that, class systems that rewards um, working as a team and role-playing. Whereas with, you know, Battlefield, previous Battlefield games, like, you know, um, an engi a, uh, a heavy machine gunner, say, in Battlefield Bad Company 2, a medic, could, you know, he could play every, he could play every role. You know, he had the heavy machine gun, so he could, you know, do a lot of slang, and then at the same time, you know, revive people, and then, you know, pick up another kit, give himself some ammo, and then... Uh, pick up his uh, his other kit once again. So it didn't. It, you, there were roles certainly, but you didn't have to stay in that role, and it didn't reward role playing as much as I feel personally it should have. I don't think it was a bad game. I had a ton of fun with it, but that's just my personal opinion. This is a game that really rewards role playing, and more importantly, it rewards teamwork. It rewards a lot of teamwork. Oh, guys, the the gameplay is wrapping up. I hope that this video has inspired you to you know. Go out, buy the buy the video game, or at least you know rent it, give it a try because you will have a lot of fun doing it. Um, there's a lot of great people playing it, and if you can, if you go out and you know give it a shot, I guarantee you're gonna have fun with it. You know, it, it, it's a little bit slower; it takes some time to get used to, and you don't you definitely there's definitely a bit of a learning curve when it comes to you know the shooting mechanics and some things, but. Overall, if you're willing to put some time into it and you're willing willing to work at it, you will have a really, really fun time doing this. 
So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, let me know if you want to see more Ghost Recon gameplays, if you want to see, you know, more of these kind of breakdowns. Um, I will be posting a video soon that shows kind of like um, the teamwork and chatter side of the, of the video. I'll be recording myself and my team as we play a game. That'll be coming next week. But uh, let me know what you guys think, you know, leave a comment, tell me if I'm totally off base or you think I'm just stupid, I'm okay with, you know, getting feedback like that. But uh, as always guys, my name is Dr. Mongoose, I hope you enjoyed the video, and remember, please watch two of my videos and call me in the morning. You all have a nice day.